I'm not mistaken. And I'm usually always correct because I'm perfect. That camera angle should be Gucci. Today we're going to be learning about my family afterward. Actually, no, I changed my mind. We're going to begin the chapter two, wives. What's the chapter two, wives? Well, let me tell you. It's in the book. The big book. Alcoholics Anonymous. Begins on page 104. It's literally called Two Wives, and there's a star there. <clears throat> An asterisk. Which says, written in 1939, when there were few women in AA, this chapter assumes that the alcoholic is the home. In the home. Learn how to read. Is likely to be the husband. But many of the suggestions given here may be adapted to help the person who lives with a woman alcoholic, whether she is still drinking or is recovering. And AA, a further source of help is noted on page 121. Let's begin. With few exceptions, our book thus far has spoken of men. But what we have said applies quite as much to women. Our activities... I'm not an alcoholic. This book doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does. Change the word alcohol to people, places, and things. Let me ask you this. What, other than you, are you in control of? Whoever you are watching this video. I'll talk, I'll talk about me. Me, Andrew Tyler Collins. Who am I in control of, other than Andrew Tyler Collins? Well, let me tell you. Nobody. Nothing. Or no place. And although I'm not in control, my mind will tell me, Andrew, you can control that person. You can control the outcome of that situation. You can control that place. And then I think, that's a bad spot to think. I have time, so I think, hmm, <laughs> maybe I can just devise a plan here and fix that situation real quick with my spiritual kit of tools that I picked up along the way. There's got to be something in there to fix that situation. And it doesn't work out. <laughs> yeah. So back here to this book. There can't be anything truthful in this book. I need to investigate, continue along here and read some of the truth to find out if any of it's actually real. Uh. Our activities in behalf of women who drink are on the increase. Okay, I don't get that. Can somebody, like, explain that sentence to me? There is every evidence that women regain their health as readily of men if they try our suggestions. In my experience, with what I know about addiction, women become way worse, way quicker than men. I don't know where they get this stat. I believe I picked this piece of information up in a treatment center. But, yeah, apparently women can go downhill way faster than men in most cases. For what reason is yet unclear. Uh, 
there is every evidence that women regain their health as readily as men, if they try our suggestions. So this book, this chapter here can be labeled to husbands, to mothers, to fathers, to sisters and brothers, just unless you're into incest, change any of the sex stuff and just disregard that. Unless you're sexually involved with whoever it is you're living with. Because this chapter is designed to approach the wives of the problem drinker, assuming in this particular chapter that the wife or husband in the modern day and age doesn't have a drinking problem, just has a spouse that has the problem. So it's a very interesting chapter and, and this is why we're gonna get it uh, we're gonna get into it here over the next few days. Um, I kinda wanna revamp a little bit of this information just so I can have it fresh in my mind and in turn you watching this video today will learn about addiction, alcoholism specifically, and what it's like to live with an addict. Yeah. It's not fun. And that's the nicest way I can say that. It's a living hell. At times. And if you are on the same level as me, like you have experienced living with an alcoholic, an addict, some type you know exactly what I'm talking about right now and you can come you can have some empathy maybe you're living with one right now maybe you just left a toxic relationship and are just getting back out into the real world this chapter may help This video will be about an hour long, so if you don't have the time or the focus level to watch it right now, you can just click it back anytime. And how you can record this station is you can click the subscribe button and you can be a, an active member of this station's community. You can click the like and the dislike button to show your appreciation for the content. And you can leave a comment in the comment section saying anything you want. Just know that people will say back anything they want, so be prepared. Been doing this YouTube thing since its inception. I'll just say this is not my first rodeo. It may be my last. <laughs> At least I'm aware of that. But I'm grateful for all the YouTube experience I've had because YouTube has shaped my life into something so amazing. And yeah, now what I'm uh, what I'm what I'm planning on doing is hacking the main system and shutting the whole place down. Good. I'm sure there's 33 million people a day that'll have something to say about that. Watch out. But for every man who drinks, others are involved. The wife who trembles in fear of the next debauch. The mother and father who see their son wasting away. Also, it even does talk about mothers and fathers in this chapter, which is interesting. So the next debauch would kind of be like, let's say we have a problem drinker that we're living with, for example, just to make us an easy example here and they're not really drinking but they're not getting treatment on a regular basis so what we're doing is we're living with a dry drunk they're white knuckling it and we're just walking on eggshells we're waiting for the next episode kind of like dr dre you know the next episode so we're gonna just stall ourselves as long as we possibly can as the problem drinker now i'm talking about and we're going to ward everybody off 
and then we will eventually be faced with a reason that we can pick up that drink again and it'll seem perfectly justified in our minds. Well, you shouldn't have done this because you would not have made me want to drink, for example. Or, I had a tough day at work today, so now I have to drink. Or, well, you didn't have sex with me last night, so now I have to drink. Just slight examples of spousal feuds that really can be worked through with verbal communication and a little bit of TLC. Just, just tender loving care or TLH if you're into that kind of thing which is tender loving hate like just TLH if you're from Prince Edward Island <laughs> TLH tender loving hate so yeah anyways um, among us are wives relatives and friends whose problem has been solved I like that solved the problem is no longer in existence as well as some who have not yet found a happy solution I like how they included the word, the descriptive verb, happy, for solution. Because, like, we can have so many solutions to our problem that end up making things worse. Like, they feel really good in the moment. Like, cheating on our spouse or going out and, like, switching addictions. Like, now I'm not going to drink alcohol anymore, but I'm going to go smoke weed. Or I'm not going to gamble anymore, but I'm going to do acid like just simply that's kind of a big jump like I'm not gonna gamble now I'm now my main focus is to take acid to cope with my pain but yeah just that's how an addict thinks it's literally that cut and dry and it makes perfect sense to us these these solutions that seem happy but they're really not happy solutions for the family as a whole more would be like I have this problem so I'm going to go get counseling and talk about it and that will be like a happy solution because the counselor is going to be conducive to my recovery and is going to help me work through my issues. As long as, as, as honest as I can possibly be, that's the amount of honesty I'll get back from the therapist or the counselor or the doctor or the psychiatrist about how they can help me with my problem. For example. So here we go. We want the wives of alcoholics to address the wives of men. Oh, the wives of Alcoholics Anonymous to address the wives of men who drink too much. Hmm. What they say will apply to nearly everyone bound by ties of blood, family, mother, father to son, or mother to sister, or father to brother, or uncle, or father to grandfather. Just for example, like... What they say will apply to nearly, yeah, so, uh, or affection to an alcoholic. And again, that word alcohol, I'm going to continuously say this because sometimes we tend to forget, like, I, this, this type of material could never apply to me because I'm not an alcoholic and my partner is not an alcoholic, they're an addict or they're, uh, they're something totally off, off, like maybe they're a mental patient. Like this book can even help mental patients without addictions. Unfortunately, like... And maybe even fortunately, like, the reality of life is that ment mental illness, mental disease, and uh, addiction is certainly a mental uh, disease. It's classified as a disease of the mind, body, and spirit, so it's actually a mental disease. Uh, it's incurable, and it's progressive and fatal. So as long as it's being treated, um, there, is no, there is no recourse that is going to result in that act of addiction, like, say, uh, weed being smoked, if that's the main thing, or sex being had, if, if that's the main thing, like, or gambling being done, if, say, gambling was the addiction, because we're dealing with the feelings and the emotions as they crop up in a way other than the main act of addiction to suppress whatever it is, is causing us to, say, drink if we're alcoholics, or use drugs if we're, narco if we're drug addicts, for example. We're now dealing with the pain in a healthy way. We're talking to somebody about it. We're working our steps. We're getting to see a counselor. Maybe we're going to treatment if we're that bad, like if we're that far gone. Or maybe if we're just not capable of living in society, maybe by this point we're in prison. Maybe we're just in jail for a month. Maybe we're in a mental home, like a detox. All these places, maybe, a, maybe we're in a recovery home, like a halfway house. Like after you get out of treatment, they'll typically say, Do you, would you like to, are you interested in going to... A recovery home so you can kind of enhance and create a foundation for your recovery just a little more 
before we just throw you out to the wolves and put you in the real world with all the pigs and the, the gnats and the mosquitoes that are going to tempt you and cause you to maybe want to go back out to your active addiction um, when it's too early in your recovery to actually be able to say no and actually mean it. So, and that's okay. Like, you know, there's no shame. There's no shame in going back out to your active addiction because it's relapse is a, it's unfortunately it's not something that I recommend but it's definitely it's not something we recommend in the program of recovery from addiction but it's definitely a part of the disease of, of addiction is that about five percent of people end up being recovered and stay recovered meaning they won't go back and I'm one of them thankfully for now but that could change tomorrow like all it takes is something happening, something really bad happening, like something so awful. I don't know for myself because I've pretty much smashed every reservation or reason that would take me back to my active addiction like narcotics, alcohol, and gambling were my main three addictions that were taking me to the, to the, to the six feet under like I was getting killed or I was stopping. That's basically the two choices I had. So I decided to stop. But... Um, that's not to say that there couldn't be something that I somehow haven't thought of that could end up happening in my life and causing me to go back out and use all that stuff again as a coping mechanism. But hopefully by three years in, you have a reasonable amount of tools for a daily living program that you can use and stay away from whatever it is was afflicting you in the past. And hopefully by this point, have a level of happiness, freedom, and serenity that only comes by getting all that garbage moved out of our head and opening up that channel of happiness, peace, and serenity. Serenity and peace are two different things. Peace is kind of like an action we take. It's like, I'm going to not hit you in the face. I'm going to instead tell you with words what I think of you. Not doesn't mean I have to be nice about it. It means I'm going to be honest with you and tell you what an absolute jackass you're being at times. Or what an absolute narcissistic, ignorant fool I'm being at times like I have the capacity to know that I'm not perfect and neither are you that's the reality today that I live in it's 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 a no bullshit world that we live in today now we can bullshit that's fun there are time and places to bullshit and to enjoy our lives and we all know that it's just fun and games at that point but as long as everybody's on the same page See, there's, like I said, there's a time and a place to have fun. And there's a time and a place to get real serious. Now, if you can kind of just know when those times are, and that comes with experience. And we're not always perfect with that either. Like, I had a situation there not too long ago that, you know, there was a situation where I was not joking and the other person thought I was joking. And by the end of it, we were on the same page. But during that time, we were on two different worlds. Thankfully, the relationship is tight, so we kind of got our bearings straight and we're good again. But that's kind of what I'm talking about, is that we have these falls in relationships. But as long as the ties that bind us together are stronger than those that would tear us apart, all will be well. As long as the communication remains honest enough, open enough, and willing enough, that's a good start. That's a big change. Where when we walk into these rooms... We don't know how to, we don't do relationships well. First of all, as human beings, and second of all, as addicts. We suffer through self-centeredness, which is the root of our all evil. It's basically like greed, lust, self-pity, playing the victim, like, oh, the world has wronged me, or, oh, they're making me do this again, like, oh, they think this of me, like, judgmental bastards. Can't believe they said that about me again. They're not worth my time, like that type of mentality. It's a total attitude change when we get our mind right. It's like we use all the same mentalities that we had when we were drugging and drinking, except now we have the tools to act that same way without having that stuff in our system, which is just learning to enjoy life and letting life happen as it may and taking the good with the bad and and letting everything just kind of flow like a river. And I know I read a nice comment there from one of my from my five star restaurant video there. I really it really looked like a a, a well thought out comment and 
something that was very spiritual to read and incredibly powerful. So if you're interested in a very powerful comment, you can go back to that video and check that out, that woman that wrote that now. And whoever you are, I thank you for that comment. It, it seemed literally too good to be true, but I just have to believe that it wasn't a troll and it was actually like a reality for that woman to actually write that about my videos. So again, those are not my words. Those are God's words just flowing through me a power greater than myself, it's all recycled stuff today. Just stuff that I've learned and picked up along the way from wise men and women in life that I carry as principles of my life today. Ways to live. It's a style, it's a fashion, it's, a, it's an attractive way to be and that's why it's such a fun way to live. And Oh my god, I can't, uh, I can't even talk. When I start to get feeling like this, it's like, a, it's like an aura an illuminating light that goes on in your mind. And it's just like, oh, oh, oh. It just hits you like a ton of bricks. Life's like a drug today. You can choose to accept the gift and just kind of give back some of that love and get back more. And as long as we find people that can reciprocate that love back, like in return, we keep the positivity going like a vicious cycle today. Like before it was a vicious cycle of hate. And now it's a vicious cycle of love. It's like what cyclone do I want to be in today? Do I want to be in the tornado of death? Death Valley in the United States? Or do I want to be up in northern Canada in the cycle of peace and love? Like, take your pick. Again, now I'm not bashing the United States for all of the people that just went, oh, wow, he's not worldly. He just bashed the United States. Crack the whip and Give him nine lashings. No, no, I'm not saying anything negative about the United States of America. There's negative things that I could say about every place in the world. Some places more than others. But it has absolutely nothing to do with the name of the country in general. It just happens to do with the, the goings-on of humankind and how corrupt, vile, and nasty self-will is in this world. And it runs rampant in more... I guess I could say, like, it just depends on the culture. It depends on the people living there, and it has nothing specifically to do with rage. Uh, rage actually has everything to do with rage, but it has nothing to do with race, sexual identity, creed, religion, lack of religion. Again, I must say, like, when I say God, I've had some people say, well, I'm not into God, I'm not religious. Well, I'm not religious either. Like, don't get me wrong. When I say God, like, I'm totally respective of religions. I've tried religions. They don't really work for me. But I'm definitely about the loving principles of God as best I can. And I have to say this, like, if you think the 12 steps and the 12 traditions are about God, there's a chapter in the big book. It's, there's a chapter to the agnostics. And it's near the beginning. And it talks about people that think about God as a religious God. It's not a religious God at all. It's actually, it's not even close to a religious God. It's, uh, I don't know exactly where that chapter is. Um, but I will find it here. Just as a quick reference, we're not going to go over it today. Um, but we will, uh. It's in uh, chapter four, we agnostics, okay? So it'll explain like the way like people that don't believe in God that come into the program of Alcoholics Anonymous and other 12-step programs can recover with a spiritual experience and believe in a power greater than themselves as a result of going through all this spiritual mumbo jumbo that we go through in the program. And I'll read the first I'll read the first paragraph just to give you a little preface to what's going to be going on here. In the preceding chapters, it's on page 44. You have learned something of alcoholism. We hope we have made clear the distinction between the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic. If when you honestly want to, you cannot quit completely, or if when drinking you have little control over the amount you take, you are probably alcoholic. If that be the case, you may be suffering from an illness which only a spiritual experience will conquer. We do believe that, that if you suffer from an addiction of any type and you want total abstinence from that addiction, like totally 
you must experience the exact same void. You must fill that void, whatever that addiction was, was filling, with something new. It needs to re be replaced. And what, te what we typically believe in this program is that if you were having a spiritual malady, then you need to have a spiritual experience to conquer that spiritual failure. It's kind of like your lungs, like you can't breathe, so you need a lung replacement. Well, here we give you a spirituality replacement. Because your spirit, you don't come in with looking for a solution to your life's problems. Say you go to the doctor and be like, oh, I have this problem, I can't breathe. And the doctor's like, all right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just replace your left foot. Like, you know, that's almost like coming into the program of Alcoholics Anonymous with a spiritual malady and saying, well, I'm just going to go get this job. I'm going to go work at the car factory. And all of a sudden my life's complete because it's going to be paying well. <laughs> like, give me a break, dude.